Okay, this is uh, video three then, um, still on the circulatory system. Uh, we're going to look at the structure and function of blood vessels uh, in this video. Um, we're going to start off uh, with structure. There's going to be five different blood vessels that we need to look at. Uh, that will be uh, the first part of the video, slides two to nine. After that, we're going to look at the function of these five blood vessels, but it's going to be in relation to the structure and the composition of something called the tunica media. Uh, the tunica media is just uh, a region of a blood vessel um, that has different compositions depending on what type of blood vessel it is. Okay, so that's... Uh, what we're going to look at uh, in this video. Now, as always, you need to be taking some notes from this video. Um, I'll be writing some notes on the slides, which you need to take down, but I'll also be uh, mentioning verbal things <coughs> that you need to make a note of uh, as well. So, uh, the first thing we're going to look at, really, uh, is I'm going to show you the arrangement of these five blood vessels as they appear in the human body. Uh, and then we're going to start looking at how uh, their structure uh, differs. Okay, so this diagram now is showing you uh, the arrangement of the five vessels that we're going to look at. So if we look over here on the left hand side, uh, here we have an artery. Okay, and uh, that artery uh, will have branches coming off it. Uh, known as arterioles. <clears throat> now these uh, vessels uh, will uh, turn into or enter into uh, the other blood vessel which is uh, the capillaries. So the capillaries are the darker brownish region in this diagram. Now um, capillaries often form something called a capillary bed um, and the capillary bed is found in uh, body organs. So uh, this region here, where the capillaries are, really represents a, a, an organ uh, within the human body. So <clears throat> once we come from the capillaries, move in uh, to the right, uh, the blood vessel changes into something called a venule. Okay, and then the venule will then... Um, turn into or branch into a uh, vein okay and the vein then will take blood back uh, to the heart so there's the five blood vessels it's artery arteriole capillary venule and vein that's the arrangement of them sort of the order in which they uh, uh, appear within the body uh, now we need to look at uh, the structure of these vessels and we're going to start looking at the artery and the vein first we're going to sort of do those two together because uh, their structure is similar uh, but there are some uh, important differences we need to be aware of as well so the next few slides we're going to look at artery and vein structure we're going to look at some diagrams of them and we're going to look at microscope images as well it's important that you are able to identify blood vessels from microscope images as well so that's going to be the next uh, couple of slides okay so this slide now is looking <coughs> at the structure of an artery in a vein um, on the left we have a diagram of an artery and a vein. Uh, we come to the, the capillary uh, later, just ignore that diagram for the moment. Uh, so the artery and the vein here uh, as a drawing. And then on the right, um, this is one uh, representation of an artery and a vein uh, under the light microscope. So the A there is, is, is indicating it's an artery, the V there for the vein. So first thing we need to uh, understand is that there are uh, three layers really uh, to both an artery and a vein. Um, the outermost layer in grey uh, is known as the tunica adventitia. You do need to know that Latin name. Okay, um, So tunica adventitia is the outer layer of an artery and a vein. Um, moving inwards, uh, we've got this region known as the tunica media. All right, this is the middle layer, 
Um, it's often referred to as the wall of an artery or a vein. And we are going to talk quite a lot about this shortly. Um, the next layer, the innermost layer, is known as the tunica intima. Okay, so there's the three layers. There's the Latin names for them. Um, right in the middle then we have the lumen. Uh, that's the hole really through which blood uh, will actually travel. Okay, so um, the artery and the vein have those three layers. There's no difference there. They have three layers. Now, um, if we look at the microscope image of an artery and a vein, um, you can see, I hope, uh, let's zoom in on this. The artery here, this region is the tunica media. Okay, and if we go down to the vein, the tunica media is there. You can see that there's very uh, there's a big difference in that, in that the artery has a very thick tunica media, but the vein has a very thin tunica media. So that's uh, one difference between um, an artery and a vein uh, that you need to make a note of. Okay. Um, the other difference then is the artery um, is more spherical than a vein. Uh, and again, you can see that in the microscope image. Um, the vein um, has an irregular shape um, because the tunica media is so thin. Um, there's not as much support within a vein, so it can be distorted uh, within the body. So that's uh, the vein there, slightly distorted. The artery on the top there is, it's not quite spherical. It's more oval in this one, but still it's its a regular shape. It's not distorted as much as the, um, as the vein. So again, the reason why the artery has a more regular shape, uh, spherical, slightly oval maybe, uh, is the thicker tunica media provides a lot more support um, so it can maintain its shape uh, a lot better than the vein. Okay, so that's another difference. Um, the other difference now is the size of the lumen. Uh, within the artery, the lumen is narrower than that of the vein. Okay, and again, you can see that clearly in the microscope image. Uh, the vein is uh, has a much larger lumen than that of the artery. So everything I've mentioned so far are sort of structural differences between arteries and veins. Uh, there's one more that I want to mention now, but uh, it's actually not shown on the current images. Uh, in a vein, uh, there are going to be valves within the lumen. Okay, and I can show you those later, but uh, arteries don't have uh, valves. Um, there is an exception to that, of course, if you remember about the blood vessels attached to the heart. Uh, you've got the pulmonary artery, which does have a valve in it. Uh, but generally, with the systemic circulation, uh, arteries don't have valves. It's the veins that have valves. And we'll discuss what they do later when we look at the functioning of blood vessels. So, um, lastly for this slide, um, if I quickly mention the capillary. Um, now a capillary does not have a tunica adventitia, it doesn't have a tunica media. All it has is a layer of cells known as the endothelial cells. Okay, now again we're going to look at what they do later, but both an artery and a vein will have a layer of endothelial cells. They're going to be um, in this region here, where that darker red line is, the wavy line, that would represent the layer of endothelial cells. And both a, a, a vein and an artery will have those endothelial cells. Um, it's it's the surface along which the blood actually flows. 
Okay, so we, we, we need to know quite a bit about these cells, so we'll leave that until later when we look at the functioning. So that's the um, main structural differences between an artery and a vein. Okay, now the next slide um, is just another couple of examples of microscope images of a vein and an artery. So if we look at slide 80 here, this is from the pancreas. Um, this is a vein, uh, sorry, this is an artery. Okay, this bit here is the lumen there. This bit here would be the tunica media, which is the middle layer. Okay, this outer layer here, this lighter pinkish layer, that would be the tunica adventitia. So that's the outermost layer there. The tunica intima is quite difficult to see on microscope images. It's going to be somewhere down here. It's a very thin layer, okay, and you will also have the endothelial cells around that region as well. Okay, you need a sort of higher magnification really to see the tunica intima. So there's the artery, it's reasonably spherical, okay. If we look over to the right, this is a vein. Again, you can see it's irregular in shape. It does have a slightly larger lumen, which is this region here. This um, this red stuff here would be some blood, okay. But um, all of it is the lumen, so irregular in shape. The tunica media, now again, because it's so thin, it's uh, it's about there. Okay, very thin tunica media. Okay, and then on the outer region would be the um, tunica adventitia. Okay, right, so that's one view there within the pancreas. The slide 59 then on the right, uh, this is a vein. Okay, uh, again, you can see the irregular shape, the large lumen. Uh, thin tunica media, just that region there, okay, and the tunica adventitia on the outermost layer. And right up in the uh, top corner here, this would be uh, a partial view of an artery, okay, much smaller lumen, uh, much thicker wall as well. Uh, all of the rest of the background, this uh, wavy appearance, these lines, that's all the connective tissue that actually holds the arteries and veins together within uh, uh, the body. Okay. So there's uh, two other examples there of arteries and veins as seen under the microscope. Now the next slide um, is a nice zoomed in image showing again an artery on the left, a vein on the right, but it's highlighting very nicely the differences in the thickness of the tunica media. So the arrows here represent the tunica media. Okay, artery, very, very thick, vein here, very, very uh, narrow. Okay, um, this uh, region here, that would be the tunica adventitia, Okay, uh, we'll talk about what, what is in that layer and the what's actually in the tunica media uh, shortly. But that's the outer layer there, the tunica adventitia, where my arrow is. Uh, and the same for the vein. Okay, and the, the, the tunica adventitia is about the same thickness in a vein, maybe a little bit thinner. Okay, right. If we stick to the vein for a minute, all of this is the lumen, but what we need to highlight is this thing here is a valve, or one part of a valve. This is the other part here. Okay, so that is what a valve would look like inside the lumen uh, of a vein. Okay, now when, when you prepare these uh, images to look at under the microscope, you are going to get some structures that are distorted, all right, and the vein uh, valve, because it's quite a fragile structure, um, 
it will distort as the slide is prepared so that the valve won't quite look like that in uh, a functioning vein okay but um, uh, this this just shows the presence of it okay so um, this is a really nice image to um, see the comparison of the thickness of the tunica media between an artery and a vein now the next slide um, it's carrying on this theme about wall thickness um, we've got uh, an artery here okay and it's uh, showing you all three layers really the tunica adventitia uh, let's get me arrow back. Okay, so there's the tunica adventitia, the outer layer. Okay, the way to sort of I to identify that is that it's sort of got gaps in it. You've got these white gaps, so it's not like a, a completely solid layer uh, as viewed under the microscope. But there's the tunica adventitia. Next then is the tunica media, very thick uh, wall. This is of an artery. Okay, right under that now would be the tunica intima, very, very thin layer. And sort of a part of that, it's the, it's the innermost layer here. It's the endothelial lining. So remember, that is what the blood will actually rub against. Uh, as it flows through the lumen. All of this red stuff here is red blood cells within the lumen. Okay, so again, another nice little um, image of the artery uh, structure there. And lastly, I think um, this is just another image again to show um the regions of an artery this one again you've got the tunica media very thick um uh, you've got the tunica adventitia the outer layer okay and then outwards again this one here this uh is the external and ct stands for connective tissue this is what holds all the arteries and veins together within an organism okay so um the connective tissue isn't a part of an artery or a vein it's just there um, connecting all the vessels together um, there's the tunica intima there and you will have the layer of endothelial cells right uh, next to the lumen and there's the lumen at the top so uh, several images there to show um, structures of arteries and veins so make sure you uh, have a uh, maybe a summary table listing the similarities and differences between an artery and a vein um, all of those I've, I've just spoken verbally okay so you need to make a note of those um, okay lastly uh, if we just quickly look at uh, a capillary um, so we've got some microscope images here of a capillary now all I want to mention with this is that um, this is a capillary here um, remember they, they only have an endothelial layer they don't have any tunica media tunica uh, adventitia at all it's just the endothelial cells uh, so a capillary is incredibly narrow, all right, and um, to show how narrow it is, uh, these red blood cells can just fit through a capillary. And we'll discuss the importance of that later, okay, so erythrocyte is just a name for the red blood cell. The other image here um, is again of a capillary and uh, it's just showing that the red blood cells here um, really have to squeeze through the capillary because it's so narrow okay and you've got a label in here showing the endothelial nuclei uh, so if I flick back actually to the early one there's the nucleus look 
um, within the endothelial cells. Okay, so it's quite a big region. It sort of bulges out a bit uh, when you see it under the microscope. So that's what the um, nucleus looks like. Right. Um, okay, so that's the general structure now of artery, vein and capillary. Okay. Um, what we need to look at lastly uh, for this section um, is the composition of each of the layers of a blood vessel. All right, so we're looking at the composition um, mainly of the tunica media. Okay, so on the left we have a nice summary table showing you what is in um, the tunica media and also what's in the tunica adventitia. All right, basically this fibrous tissue that's uh, part of the tunica adventitia, okay, um, which is again the, the outer layer, okay. So every blood vessel will have a tunica adventitia uh, except for an arteriole, a capillary. They don't uh, have those uh, outer layers. Right, um, this uh, region here, uh, we've got elastic tissue and smooth muscle. All right, so we're looking at the blue rectangle and the red. Now, in an artery, it'll have a lot of elastic tissue and a lot of smooth muscle. The reason for that, we're going to look uh, in the next section here about how these blood vessels function. Um, if you look at a vein right down the bottom, um, a vein has elastic tissue, it has smooth muscle, but it has less of it. Okay, and this is what makes the wall or tunica media a lot thinner uh, in a vein. Okay, um, so if we look at the endothelium, every blood vessel will have an endothelium. Artery, arteriole, capillary, venule, and vein. Okay. Um, when it comes to an arteriole, now the only thing it has as part of its tunica media is muscle. Now, it has no elastic tissue at all. Okay. It doesn't have this uh, tunica externa. Okay. It just has muscle. And again, we, we'll look at why it just has muscle in the next section. It's to do with its function. Uh, the capillary, uh, just the endothelial cells, as I've mentioned. Okay, and that's what it looks like as a nice diagram on the right there. And lastly, the venule. Um, these, it, it, it depends on sort of the information you're given, but sometimes the venule can have some muscle and some uh, elastic tissue. It depends. In this table, it's showing that it doesn't have any. Okay, but it may in reality have a little bit um, of those two tissues. Okay, uh, but it does have a, an outer tunica adventitia layer there and uh, we've we've already spoken there about the uh, the vein uh, and about it has a less smooth and uh, elastic tissue um, I'll discuss later on about the size of the arteries and the veins and so on um, and we'll look shortly about why the thickness of the wall is different as well. Okay, but from that from that table, I just want you to know the composition uh, of each blood vessel and um, the differences in composition mainly lie with the tunica media, uh, which has smooth muscle and elastic tissue. Okay, so that's uh, an important table. You need to make a note there of the composition of each blood vessel. 
Uh, on the right, this is just a, another artistic diagram of an artery and a vein, okay, showing the uh, uh, labelings. Um, there is a couple of different labelings here. Um, let's just make you aware of it. <clears throat> They've got here tunica externa. That's just another name for the tunica adventitia. Okay. Uh, you can use that term if you want. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's the tunica media. Okay, so you can see the the difference there. A lot of smooth muscle for the artery, uh, less for the vein. Uh, this label in here called elastin, that's just elastic tissue. And the elastic tissue normally occurs in bands and uh, that purple layer there is the elastin or elastic uh, tissue and then right on the inner surface is the tunica intima that's the endothelial cells and obviously then the lumen running there and within the vein you can now see the valve there within it okay so that's the general structure and the general composition of the artery and the vein capillary venule arteriole. What we're going to look at next is how each of these vessels functions based on what is in their tunica media. Okay um, and what's the significance of a vessel not having a tunica media as well okay so um, this is slide nine then this is the last slide to do with the general structure of blood vessels okay so um, let's have a look at the functioning now of arteries based on the composition of their tunica media so um, to do this, we can split uh, arteries into two types. Uh, we've got an elastic artery um, and a muscular artery. Okay, so these elastic arteries, they're called that because they have a higher proportion of elastic tissue within their uh, tunica media. Now, what arteries have the uh, this feature this extra um, thickness of elastic tissue well they're going to be arteries close to the heart so an example of that of course is the aorta okay now the aorta is basically attached to the left um, ventricle uh, the left ventricle can contract with uh, great force uh, so the blood coming out of the left ventricle is under great pressure. So if you can imagine uh, the aorta, when the blood enters the aorta under very high pressure, uh, the aorta will want to expand. It'll want to stretch, basically, to accommodate the high volume and the high speed of blood coming into the aorta. So that's why an aorta and, and, and any artery close to the heart really will have uh, a high proportion of elastic tissue okay so it'll allow them to uh, expand to uh, accommodate that extra blood volume coming into it from the left ventricle um, it will then also want to recoil okay just like a sort of a, a stretched elastic band if you let go of it the elastic band will snap back to its original shape and size. That that happens with the aorta and other elastic arteries. They have to recoil, which means they return back to their original shape. And that also, this, this recoiling, we're going to talk about it in, a, in another video in more detail, but it allows blood actually to flow continuously through arteries okay so it, it's, it's to aid blood flow 
basically for now but we will uh, expand on it uh, in another video okay um, the other thing that will be present in these uh, elastic arteries uh, will be collagen okay so they will have a reasonably high proportion of collagen. Now collagen is a, uh, a very strong um, fibrous um, uh, protein. Okay, why is it there? Well, it actually prevents uh, over expansion. Okay, or over stretching uh, of the artery. Okay, if it didn't have this supporting meshwork of collagen, the elastic artery would just burst. Okay, just like a balloon that's too overinflated, the rubber will just burst. So it needs this uh, collagen to um, uh, prevent it over expanding and therefore prevent it from bursting. Now, um, little bit about the dimensions of an elastic artery um, generally the um, lumen uh, no the wall should I say will be about two millimeters uh, thick all right so that's when I say the wall that means the tunica media so it'll be about two millimeters thick and um, the overall diameter of the lumen then uh, all the way across will be approximately 25 uh, millimeters now again those values will change okay depends what book you read it depends what values are used in a question okay but generally for an elastic artery that's the dimension so that's the wall and this is the lumen okay uh, I know that my values here are different from the one in the table there. Uh, this table is just looking at general arteries, okay? So uh, that's why my values are a bit different there. Um, okay, so that's your elastic artery. Now, as arteries move away from the heart, they become further away, the composition of the tunica media changes because as you get further away from the heart the pressure of the blood uh, does drop so what happens is the composition of the tunica media changes and you get these muscular arteries okay um, so they have a high proportion of muscle and less elastic fibers okay uh, so these muscular arteries are generally small and again when an artery gets further away from the heart the the, the overall size of it does decrease okay so on that note the wall is about one millimeter thick and uh, the lumen there is about four millimeters thick um, uh, in diameter so they are smaller arteries but as you can see the size of the wall is a lot thicker in relation to the size of the lumen okay so that's that's just a, an important point I think you need to make a note of there all right the wall is much thicker in relation to the diameter of the lumen um, so why do these smaller arteries need uh, a high proportion of muscle? Well, one reason is uh, it's quite an interesting thing. Um, if, uh, if this diagram here, very simple diagram, represents a leg. Okay, here is the knee. Okay, now when you bend your knee, you've got blood vessels running through that knee that are being bent. Okay, so... Uh, small arteries are, are often found in joints and um, when they bend, as the knee bends, the, the muscles prevent the collapse of the artery. Okay, so they actually keep the artery open, the lumen open, so blood can continue to flow. You wouldn't want um, 
uh, a blood vessel collapsing wherever you uh, bent a joint okay it would be ridiculous so that that's one sort of function of these muscular arteries um, now the other one <coughs> is um, they do have a nervous supply to them so within the wall here they have what's known as uh, nerves from the autonomic nervous system now autonomic just means automatic if I write it in for you auto nomic uh, ns is nervous system okay um so what what that nervous supply does is that it can contract or relax the muscle within the tunica media and um, that can regulate blood flow into an organ uh, a good example of that is um, if you've got a blood supply going to a muscle and you are actively using that muscle you may be running or cycling okay if it's a leg muscle um, the the actual diameter of the lumen can be increased and that will increase the blood flow uh, to the muscles okay um, the other thing that can happen uh, is that the diameter can be restricted it can become narrower and that often happens with animals that dive uh, including humans to some extent uh, when you dive certainly for long periods of time um, you you want your blood flow uh, to change slightly based on the circumstances of you diving so very often the muscular arteries will contract uh, there um, to uh, actually to, to maintain blood pressure and blood flow really um, in diving animals but anyway that's uh, that's generally what muscular arteries do they can change the, the diameter of the lumen um, to increase or reduce blood flow to an organ and also the muscle prevents the blood vessel from collapsing uh, at joints okay so that's your uh, muscular artery and elastic artery so after an artery now comes the arteriole and uh, an arteriole um, is uh, quite a small vessel okay uh, a typical size again the size of the wall first is about 30 micrometers and the size of the lumen is about 30 micrometers again those values may be slightly different depending on where you look um, but what also is happening is the wall of the arteriole has a very high proportion of muscle again okay so even though the the vessel itself is a lot smaller than a, a muscular or elastic artery the proportionally the size of the wall is very large compared to the lumen or is very thick compared to the lumen so generally an arteriole will just have muscle within its tunica media okay now what's that muscle there for well if we have a look at this uh, diagram here actually let's uh, zoom in on it all right this is the uh, diagram from before where we're looking at the arrangement of blood vessels in uh, a human if we look here we've got an arteriole okay now an arteriole is the vessel just before uh, we get to our capillaries okay now an arteriole can be branched all right so generally you won't get just sort of one arteriole uh, it can be uh, you can get branching of the arterioles and that's what's shown in this region here the the lighter brown region so again this muscle um, is supplied with nerves from the autonomic nervous system and the muscle can contract or relax and change the diameter of the lumen so again 
it's there to regulate blood flow through the capillary okay now for example uh, if you haven't eaten anything so your digestive system has none or very little food in it you don't want as much blood go into your digestive system because you won't get as much absorption of nutrients so what can happen is these arterioles can constrict it can reduce the blood flow to the capillaries of your digestive system and the blood can be diverted somewhere else then where it may be needed uh, uh, may be needed more so that's one thing regulation of um, blood flow through a capillary now the arterioles can go to an extreme version of regulating blood flow uh, what they can do is they can completely constrict so that red line I just drawn there can mean that the whole of the arteriole has closed off now when that happens you often get a blood vessel going around the capillary to the venule so the arteriole can actually completely divert blood around an organ if a, the blood supply to that organ is not needed temporarily okay um, these things here are known as a ductus venosus really okay they're found in various uh, organs in the body so that that's really the, the the function of the arteriole again it's to do with its high proportion of muscle uh, within its wall right okay the next vessel in our journey is actually the capillaries okay now the capillaries are the narrowest of blood vessels um, again they don't have a tunica media all they have is an endothelial layer so that's what that uh, blue region is that is the endo uh, thelium okay now that endothelium is leaky it will allow um, substances to leave the capillary so capillaries are actually there to function as exchange vessels um, so within a capillary or a capillary bed as I mentioned earlier this uh, dark brown region you can get exchange of oxygen carbon dioxide uh, glucose so this is why it doesn't have a tunica media all right it can't have a thick wall because you won't be able to get substances leaving the capillary so that's why it just has an endothelial layer to allow all this exchange to occur and again we're going to pick up on this in another video uh, look at this exchange in more detail uh, we have to know something about the formation of tissue fluid and so on so uh, th this will be uh, looked at in detail in a later video so that's the um, the function of the capillaries really so all that's left is um, the venules and the veins okay so um, the venules and the veins then these are the vessels now that uh, deoxygenated blood uh, travels through and ultimately the blood will return back to the heart uh, via a vein uh, so what uh, I've got now are simple diagrams again to show the the relative sizes of venules I've got in there a small vein and then a large vein a large vein an example of that would be the vena cava okay all right so that would be taking blood right back up to the uh, right uh, atrium uh, in terms of the sizes now a venule the wall is about three micrometers okay and the overall uh, size of the lumen would be about 30 uh, micrometers okay 
Um, so the, the lumen size is about the same as uh, an ar arteriole. Okay, uh, a small vein, we're looking here at about 0.5 millimetres for the wall and the lumen is about 5 millimetres. Okay, so uh, the lumen size and the wall size is a lot bigger than a venule. Now a large vein, um, obviously the lumen is a lot bigger, but the, the wall is about 1.5 millimetres and the lumen is about 30 millimetres. Now this lumen is going to be slightly bigger than that of the aorta, if this is the vena cava, large vein. The aorta is a large artery. Okay, so the said earlier in the video that the um, lumen is is a bit bigger in a vein compared to an artery. Um, so we've got a very narrow uh, wall. Okay, as we've said um, earlier in the video, it's only about 1.5 millimeters. Okay, the 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 thickness of the wall of an artery is a lot bigger than that. Okay, so um, the composition then of um, these vessels, um, a vein, again it's got elastic tissue, smooth muscle, it's got some fibrous tissue like collagen, uh, it's got a tunica, uh, adventitia of course. Uh, the small vein, again, it, it's got the same stuff in it, it's just uh, the size of that uh, wall is a lot smaller, but it will still have smooth muscle and elastic tissue uh, in there. Uh, the venule, uh, as we said earlier, you know, it, it does have this, this fibrous tissue in it. Um, it may have some small amount of smooth uh, muscle or elastic tissue as well but uh, if it's there there won't be a great deal of it so um that's really the only difference now is just it has a lower proportion of smooth muscle and elastic tissue within the small vein and the large vein um the pressure of the blood within a vein is very low uh, that's why it doesn't need a thick tunica media because it doesn't need to withstand high pressures. Okay, but of course it does have valves in which uh, aids the return of blood uh, to the heart. Okay, so that's um, the end of this video. Um, which we've looked at the structure and function of blood vessels. Uh, in the next video, we're going to expand on some of the things we've gone through in this video. Okay, but make sure now you know the differences between arteries, veins, venules, capillaries, and so on. Make sure you know the composition of the tunica media um, and the names of the layers uh, of these blood vessels. Okay, so that's the end of this video three.